what is KB's uh, interest in, in this area in the first place? Why is this something that you work on at all? Yeah, well, so uh, KB has in his instructions to support uh, research and to uh, sort of promote uh, the development of a democratic society. And we do that in different ways. And one way is to, to use our digitized uh, resources, be it text or otherwise, uh, to use them in such a way and to help others to use them so they can be used, for example, to build language models. We see that language models can be used to rationalize stuff that we do in society, in, in governmental agencies, but also in, in corporations. Uh, so it's, um, it's part of the basic sort of KB instructions to do this. And, and we see that we have the largest collection of at least editorial texts uh, by far in Sweden. Uh, uh, and since it's sort of locked into the library, we need to take part in these processes to be able to use this data. So RISE, for example, for them to use uh, our collections to build models, they need to cooperate with us somehow, and we need to cooperate with them. So, uh, so our interest is sort of, it's, it's in the uh, task of the library, the basic task of the National Library too. Okay. Can I add something here? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you look at the computational resources that go into training one of these models, the, the, those are huge efforts. And for a small country with a small languages, mm -hmm. like. Like Swedish, we really need to work together. Mm. There is no way that one actor will be able to produce these kind of resources for Swedish. So, I mean, all the actors in Sweden, we need to pool resources and build this for Sweden and, and yes. buy Swedish data. And that, I think that's a very important thing. And that's the reason why we all want to co cooperate on this. Uh, along those lines, one of the questions that have, has come in is about cooperation with the other Nordic countries. Uh, what possibilities is, is it there? Uh, sharing uh, corpuses, etc., and, and computational power to, to, to build at least a Nordic GPT-3, perhaps? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And we've been in contact with the Norwegian National Library, and they have a, a great lab uh, there. Uh, and we have not been so fortunate when it comes to the Danish library for some reason. But so uh, the idea is, uh, it's not that, but it's, it's, we have the difficulty with sort of how can we transport data or can we transport the model? Uh, but it, it should be possible to do that uh, using the resources of other national li libraries as well. Uh, another can interesting I, can question. I, can, I, can I add yes. something? Sorry, Magnus, sorry, sorry for interrupting. But I think also from a model perspective, uh, what we have seen with these large scale transformer networks is that they, you can really benefit from, from transfer learning between languages and mm. the Scandinavian languages are basically the same structure. So I think that we will be able to build better language models for all the Scandinavian languages if we can train them on Scandinavian data more generally. Yeah, okay. Uh, just saying, so the corpus version number three that Martin is talking about, that could be something that will, will contain Danish and uh, Norwegian. Yeah. And, and Martin has something to say, I think. Yes, uh, d just to reiterate and make that clear. I mean, even though we can um, sort of expose the data, we will always expose the model, of course. Um, and just to again say that again that i mean if you have the pre-trained model that is created uh, here or somewhere then you can then you can fine tune it for your for your task and then you probably then you don't need all of the data that was used for pre-training so um, the, the, i mean that's a big part of these models that we, we release a pre-trained model that doesn't uh, contain any uh, copyrighted material it's just a model uh, and you can use that one 